stop. If you're a passenger, you don't have to identify. Voice alone can't be deemed interference. Okay, yes, it is interference. You think you Voice alone can't, can't be. Go what's your name and badge okay. number? It's printed on my shirt. Move out. Are of you the trying way. to intimidate me? I'm not trying to intimidate you. So I'm why are you so close to me? Okay, give me your ID. You've interfered with an investigation. If you refuse, give me your ID. You're going to jail. Hey, go ahead. Get your supervisor on the jail. scene. I don't need a supervisor. You can see him down at the jail. You're going to jail for interference. What's interference? Just so you saying my with my investigation. All right, he got his. All right, he got his in. You have no right, right. to interfere with an investigation. He, he put his hands on me. Can okay. I put my can I put my phone in my pocket? I just show you so deprivation of rights under the color no, of law. No, no, no. I, I have a right to record. You do. You can record. I don't care. So you saying because I so no, you saying because I because I said something that's that's yes, interfering. You can you can stay away get your and supervisor walk. on the scene you, before you, you make see. a big mistake. Oh, you see this? I don't need a Okay, get your get your okay. sorry, get your no, lieutenant on the scene. You're going over to my car. My attention away from yours. Thing. Yours. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, for those of you that are keeping track on the Long Island audit and um, his legal problems that he's having in Connecticut, as well as Berwyn, Illinois, you're going to find this video interesting. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of, um, but there's been an ongoing feud between the Long Island audit and another frauditor for a while now. Okay, for a while. This has been going on for at least three, four months now. And um, let's just say some of you might know this particular frauditor and might not believe what he says. But um, I believe him. Um, he is starting to show he is starting to show that the Long Island audit is truly an asshole. He is um, starting to show that this guy is not what he seems to be. I get people that comment on my videos, oh, you got the Long Island audit pegged wrong. He is out there. He's really out there fighting for our rights. He's making a difference. I don't see that. I truly don't. I, I see what I see him doing is going to city halls, making our public employees look stupid. When he encounters police, I see him making them look stupid as well. Well... He may call it exercising his rights. I call it harassment. You go to a city hall and because those people there may not know you and may feel a little, you know, awkward that you're going in there with a damn camera aiming it at them. And all of a sudden you start, you know, like you, you start narrating to his subscribers that, oh, look, I've done found corruption and so on, you know. And in reality... These are just people that are, listen, every city hall, the city hall in my area, I kind of know everybody. We all know each other somewhat. I, I mean, I go to city hall to pay my taxes and so on. But, you know, every city hall is for that particular city that it's in, right? For the people that are in that particular city. So kind of everybody knows everybody. Here comes a stranger out of the woodworks aiming his damn phone at the, you know, come on. And he makes it sound because you get one or two people that may not feel comfortable with having a phone um, aimed at them, a camera aimed at them. Now, all of a sudden, he done found corruption and and we're going to do this. We're going to change this. And it's a shame that, that the people are like this. And you can't knock people for being overly protective for, you know, for their city hall when they end up calling the cops on his ass. They're protecting their city hall. How could you knock him for that? But, you know, his subscribers, they're so dumb. They're so dumb believing every damn thing that comes out of this man's mouth. But anyway, I want you guys to watch this video. Take from it what you want. Believe what you want. But I honestly believe that this guy is showing the, um, the Long Island audit to be the piece of shit that he is. Let me know what you think about it and um, we'll go from there, guys.
On November 8th, 2021, Sean Paul Reyes, AKA Long Island Audit, filmed inside of the Berwyn, Illinois Town Hall after an internet stranger dared Reyes to film in the town hall in violation of openly posted building policy. In the glass window of the building's public entrance and throughout the building were posted signs against filming and recording inside of town hall. The city administrator called the police. The police removed Reyes from the building, arrested him, and ultimately charged him with disorderly conduct. Here's a few clips from the video. No cameras or recording devices without prior approval. Oh, so here's that sign. No cameras or recording devices without prior approval per 720 ILS 5 ART.14. You the city administrator? I am. Hi. Are you um, recording me? I am recording you. I would ask that you not record me, please. On our doors, we have a sign that says, no recordings are allowed unless we give permission. I, I am not giving you permission. No cameras, recording devices without prior approval. Per 720 ILS. Article 4. Article 4. There's no expectation of privacy in public, sir. The Is courts there? have already ruled that. Who's the victim in all this? Seems like it would be me. You could keep the phone. On November 10th, 2021, after Reyes posted bail, Reyes stood out front of the Berwyn Town Hall until the mayor of Berwyn, in an effort to dispose of Reyes, arrived and ultimately removed the town hall sign posted at the entrance that prohibited filming and recording in town hall. However, the mayor did not remove any of the signs posted further inside of the building. Of course, the mayor's plan worked and Reyes fell for it and left the area. Also, of course, the mayor removed the sign, but not Reyes's disorderly conduct charge. Here's a video clip of the mayor. You're going to so pull I'm the gonna, signs down? I'm going to take those down myself right now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah! One more. Yeah! On December 27th, 2021, Reyes appeared in court for his arraignment via webcam. Reyes opted to represent himself against the strong advice of the judge. The prosecutor presented two motions to the court, one for a temporary restraining order against Reyes and the other for a waiver of witness appearances until the day of trial. Of course, Reyes was frozen clueless in court and didn't understand the nature of the proceedings, but otherwise projected an attitude of privilege and entitlement towards the judge. Here's the video. Your Honor, I will, I will be proceeding pro se in this matter. Um, Your Honor, I, I have not had any third party or other okay, communications so the, with, okay, so with, with attitude, the complaint. I ask you, my question to you is, What's your position on her request for a special sanction? I object, Your Honor. Okay. Over your objection, I will be granting the special conditions of bond in that no third, that you not have any third party contact the complaining witness in any form, be it electronic, mail, anyway. Your Honor, so may I? I want to. I am going to grant that request. Okay, Your Honor. I, just, I would just like some. I would just like some clarity, Your Honor. Okay, two people cannot talk at once. I understand. So I hadn't even finished saying I was granting the request before everybody else started talking. Understood. Granting the request. Now, Mr. Reyes, you were about to say something. Yes, I would just like clarif um, clarification on the, because the uh, state is referring to people that I don't no, know. The state, the state did not refer to any. Well, that's what they use their basis for, for the special order. Special condition. This is why you need an attorney because they know the, the procedures and they know what a special condition of bond is. An attorney would know exactly what she's talking about. They did not give me any allegations. They did not allege anything on the record. They just asked for a special condition of bond. They made allegations as far as that's they your honor. They did not make allegations to me, okay. sir. Okay. They asked, I grant it. But your honor they did make allegations of threats i would just like for the record to show that they did make alleg allegations that i could be possibly in a throw through a third party contact threats and i take that seriously your honor no they said uh, that the complaining witness has been receiving threats okay your honor i would just ask the court to on this misdemeanor complaint no, no 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 the only question before you is your position on the complaining witness being excused. I, I, okay, I, I, I object. Okay, you object? Correct. What's the basis of your objection? Um, I have the right to face my accuser, Your Honor. She's the complaining witness. That's at trial. That is at trial. 
Now, you were about to say something else, Ms. Doria? Um, Your Honor, I was um, arrested on the, this misdemeanor complaint. Uh, the complaint is Ruth Siaba Green for disorderly conduct. Um, I was originally arrested for felony eavesdropping. That was what I was originally arrested for, uh, 720 ILCS. Um, that was the original complaint against me, but for some reason it was changed to a disorderly conduct. I'm asking the court to find probable cause on this complaint. All right, so let me stop you here. Let me stop you here. You don't want the court. First of all, this is a misdemeanor, so I'll, I, there is, that's not appropriate avenue Wait, on a misdemeanor. That's appropriate avenue on a felony. Okay, number one. Number two, you would not want the court to find anything any probable cause because that means that they're saying that there's evidence or possible evidence that you committed a crime. So you never want the court to find probable cause against you. But if you had an attorney, he would explain that to you and you would know that you was just asking for something that was not in your best interest. Well, I believe, right. I believe that there's so, no problem with that. I, so. I understand what you believe, but I'm telling you what the reality is. Now, I am not granting that. This is not the appropriate avenue for that request. What else do you have? I have nothing else, Your Honor. I just, right. I'm, I'll be filing a motion to dismiss. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I will have a question, Your Honor. When... Okay, so understand, I can't answer any legal questions for you. So you get no help from me whatsoever, <laughs> legally. So if it's a question you ask and it's a legal question, I'm going to advise you that I cannot hand, I cannot answer that. You need representation, all right? Okay. So just, you know, when I say that, when you ask me questions, or if you ask me questions, that's why I'm saying it, all right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead. What's your question, Mr. Ray? Um, my question would be, as I'm not familiar with um, the, Illinois, uh, the Cook County uh, system, I would just ask, is there a way for, is it is there a way to file a motion electronically in your courtroom as it is closed due to coronavirus? So, that's something that an attorney would know. Okay. I'll figure it out. Don't you worry about it. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. But I respectfully disagree with the judge's constant remarks that I need an attorney. Why would I need an attorney with such absurd charge against me? I will be filing a motion to dismiss. If that motion is denied, there will be no deals. We will go to trial and I will win. And when I win, I will be suing the city of Berwyn. On December 28th, 2021, the day after Reyes's arraignment, and just for fun and to see what would happen, I emailed Reyes and the prosecutor a legal memo arguing against Reyes's personal opinion that town halls are public spaces for First Amendment purposes. The prosecutor is now using my memo against Reyes. A link to the memo was in the description. Exactly five minutes after I emailed my memo to both parties, Reyes started texting me. Here's some of the conversation. The gray text bubbles are Reyes. The green text bubbles are me. While I was waiting for Reyes to draft his motion to dismiss, I strongly considered Reyes's invitation to change it up and make my memos more challenging. I decided to take Reyes up on his offer and argue the elements of Reyes's conduct instead of the constitutionality of it. Therefore, on January 3rd, 2022, I emailed a second memo to the prosecutor. The link to the memo was in the description. The next day at three o'clock in the morning, Reyes started texting me. Here's some of the conversation. On January 12th, 2022, Reyes announced that he had filed his motion to dismiss. I submitted, electronically filed my motion to dismiss. The link to Reyes's motion to dismiss is in the description. 
Reyes' motion to dismiss is an example of exactly why Reyes needs an attorney. Reyes' motion argues backwards. Instead of arguing the heart of the issue of whether filming against policy in limited public forums is disorderly conduct in Illinois or not, Reyes argues away from the issue. Reyes copied all of the case law and language from my memo, but tried to arrange it in a way that he thought would be favorable to him. However, Reyes ultimately made it worse for himself because now he and I are both arguing against him. Reyes should have used his own argument and his own cases in his motion to avoid incriminating himself. Let's read some of Reyes' motion to understand why it would have been better for Reyes to just not say or do anything at all. Reyes admits that an arrest and conviction for disorderly conduct is justified when the defendant directly bothers or harasses other people. Reyes concedes that the Supreme Court of Illinois noted that the offense of disorderly conduct is intended to guard against an invasion of the right of others not to be molested or harassed, either mentally or physically, without justification. Reyes states, as an initial matter, however, this complaint is fatally flawed because it fails to accuse Mr. Reyes of engaging in any conduct which could conceivably be described as disorderly. At best, such allegations are consistent with eavesdropping, although the Illinois Supreme Court recently struck down the state's eavesdropping statute as unconstitutional in People v. Clark. But according to People v. Clark, Reyes' conduct in town hall would have been found by the court to satisfy the elements of eavesdropping had the court not struck the statute down for unrelated reasons. The court stated, Audio recordings of truly private conversations are within the legitimate scope of the statute. The prohibition on those recordings serves the purpose of the statute to protect conversational privacy. However, the statute's blanket ban on audio recordings sweeps so broadly that it criminalizes a great deal of wholly innocent conduct. This wouldn't be the first time Reyes used one of my memos. I once gave Reyes a legal memo to submit to the judge in one of Reyes' criminal cases in Waterbury, Connecticut for trespassing inside of a post office. But in that case, I gave Reyes a memo that I drafted in his favor from scratch. The judge dismissed Reyes' trespassing charge. Reyes later admitted to me, but kept secret from his subscribers, that my legal memo worked for Reyes. Here's the conversation. Reyes' text bubbles are gray. My text bubbles are green. The problem for Reyes this time is that Reyes tried to copy my memo on his own instead of obtaining one in his favor for me to submit to the judge. If you want to see more videos exposing Reyes, you know how to let me know. That concludes this video. I love you and goodbye.